Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatly Toes Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you're all doing well. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different to the stuff that I normally do on this channel because I'm doing a response video to a thread started by uh, Richard McCook on his channel and his thread is 10 final questions for vinyl community YouTube video makers. Now I know I do have a few um, video makers uh, subscribe to my channel, so I'm, I'm guessing that this video will probably be more of interest to them. Um, but for the rest of you that don't make videos, um, it might give you a little insight into uh, the workings and the mind of uh, a uh, YouTube video making idiot such as myself. Now, Richard has got a great channel. Richard is a lovely bloke. He's from Northern Ireland in the UK and uh, he's got a great channel that's been going quite a long time. He's got lots and lots of content. He talks about uh, lots of different genres of music and uh, different bands and stuff like that. And um, he, uh, he he does do some Beatles stuff. In fact, recently he did a ranking of Paul McCartney's uh, solo albums, which was really interesting to watch. But I think um, he's really a David Bowie, um, I'm trying to think of the collective noun for David Bowie fans. Um, I don't think there is one. Let's call them um, zygonometrists or something like that. Um, but I think David Bowie is his main man, but he does do lots and lots of, uh, videos about other sort of genres as well. Glam rock is big on glam rock as well. And he likes ABBA. Um, anyway, so if you want to check out Richard's channel, please do. Um, I'm sure he'd be happy to see you. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. Okay, so 10 questions, uh, 10 final questions. The reason why it's final questions is he's done three of these. One, two years ago um, w when I, I wasn't on YouTube at that time, so I, I missed it. Um, the, the other one, which was about a year ago, the second one was about a year ago, and um, my channel had only been going um, a few months, so I didn't really feel uh, confident or qualified um, to answer his questions, but I do now, so I'm gonna give uh, his final 10 questions a go. Okay, so question number one is, do you ever struggle to come up with content ideas or ideas for videos? Um, no, I don't actually, because I guess, because my channel is fairly young, um, I've still got lots and lots of work to do, lots of things to uh, to cover on my channel and it's not so I do have a kind of a list of things that I've got um you know coming up the most recent ideas and and stuff like that so I don't really struggle at the moment um to come up with new ideas for videos um it's more I struggle with the time um to make them although that will change in a few months because I'm retiring um at the end of June and I'll have lots more time to make videos so question number two is if purchasing subscribers was an option, would you partake? And I think what Richard means here is that if you were allowed on or by YouTube to pay actual cash um, to get people to subscribe to your channel, would you do it? And uh, the answer to that is uh, absolutely not. Uh, no, I wouldn't, um, because there isn't any point. There's no point in forcing people to subscribe to your channel. If people like what you do, then they will subscribe to your channel, I'm sure. Um, but there's no point in having people um, on there that have got no interest in what you're doing. The good thing about having a channel is that you get to talk um, to people that are into the same music as you and get feedback from them and you know not necessarily you know not necessarily we don't all think the same and we all have different opinions and that's a great thing um about the having a youtube channel that you've got that forum uh, to get your opinions out and listen to other people's opinions but you don't want people um you know i'm not gonna go you know you know what i don't even ask my friends to subscribe to my channel because i think um i think that having a youtube channel i mean they know that i'm a beatles nerd they know that i'm a beatles nerd but you know they wouldn't be interested in watching me droning on and on um about the beatles um you know on uh, a video because they probably have enough of it in real life. So I don't, you know, I don't ask 
even my friends to uh, subscribe to my channel unless I know that they're going to be interested and want to watch the vi the videos. Because having a YouTube channel is like you know it's 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 quite a ner it's quite a nerdy thing, isn't it? Quite a, a geeky thing. It's a and uh, you know it's it's a little bit of a uh, it's a little bit of a dirty secret, like having some sort of weird like sexual fetish. You don't really want to shout it from the uh, the rooftops. Look at me, I'm a Beatles nerd. Um, so no, I don't I don't do that. In fact, yeah, I didn't even uh, tell my wife, Mrs. Beatley Tone, that I had a Beatles channel youtube channel until i've been doing it about three or four months so absolutely not don't uh want to get uh to pay for subscribers to watch my channel so question number three is do you like to mention how much you paid for records um well i don't have a problem um saying how much i paid for records um i've done sort of one video where it was kind of essential uh to say uh, what I paid for records. That was um, a video where I talked about all the uh, the Paul McCartney archive uh, collection box sets and um, did a price comparison about um, comparing what each of them were when they were first released, what the price was when they were first released to what the value was uh, today or at that point when I did that the video so it was essential that I said what the what the how much I paid for them um the, also with with new albums um everybody knows what you pay for albums or the ballpark figure of what you pay for al albums so uh no I don't really have a problem with it um I think that if you're showing something on your channel uh, and it might be something that one of your viewers wants to buy, then it's a good thing to say uh, what you've paid for it because um, if they're looking uh, to buy it, then it's good for them to know uh, what they might have to, uh, might expect to pay for it. So it's quite useful for viewers watching uh, the video. Um, if I um, if I bought like a second hand record and I paid well over the top for it, I probably uh wouldn't say how much i paid for it not because i'm ashamed of it but just because you know you know it's a bit like showing off and saying you know you i've paid all this money for this one record but generally i don't have a problem um saying how much i've paid for records so question number four is are there any genres of music that you really don't like and would never show on your channel? Well, that's a little bit tricky for me because my channel is a Beatles channel. So at the moment, I'm only doing videos about the Beatles or solo Beatles. But, you know, I own loads and loads of albums by other artists and other bands that I absolutely love. And maybe at some point I may, you know, branch out and do videos on other bands apart from the Beatles but at the moment I'm not doing it but say I did right there are a couple of uh, genres that I really don't like but I don't own any albums within those genres so I would never show them I wouldn't be able to show them on my channel one of those is jazz never been able to get on with jazz at all to me that is just like 30 musicians playing different tunes at the same time usually in different keys to each other which to me is just a cacophony of whittling um the i don't like rap music or hip hop or trip hop or plip plop or flip flop or whatever the hell it's called these days uh just don't like that don't own anything in that genre um but another genre i do own uh some records in that genre and um uh I probably wouldn't show them because I just don't like it anymore. And that is prog rock. Um, I, you know, gr you know, I grew up in, as I was a teenager in the mid seventies, all my mates at school were all into prog. So I had prog thrust down my throat, um, false fed um, prog rock. And my, <laughs> you know, my mates would bang on endlessly about um, the fantastic musicianship of these bands and that it the, I'm not questioning that there is no question or no debate that anyone who's in a prog rock band um, is a fantastic musician uh, technically um, but it's not all about uh, the technical skills 
of musicians. They would also bang on um, in a kind of uh, a snobby way, looking down at me as a Beatles fan or a fan of glam rock or pop in general uh, by saying you know, that the bands that we like are album bands album bands and what they mean by album bands is this they say that anything that they released would never trouble uh the silly old pop singles charts uh which to me is just another way of saying um that they couldn't come up with a decent hook or a half decent chorus a prog rock to me a prog rock albums um you know typically tended to have a theme or a concept and uh, that theme was either sort of myth, you know, mythical beasts or historical battles, all things that were really relevant in the mid mid seventies. And the the tracks, you know, they typically would be really long, drawn out affairs. If they didn't clock in at least fifteen minutes, then they clearly weren't pulling their weight. And the tracks were, you know, full of these sort of long, sort of instrumental passages of noodling and difficult uh, time signatures uh, and stuff like that. Now, you know, I, I tried to love it, you know, because I wanted to fit in with my friends. I tried it, I tried it and I tried it. And I do own a few prog rock bands, uh, rock prog rock albums. Um, my mates were into bands like Yes and Genesis and Jeff Tull and Pink Floyd, who I do like, um, but I only have a small window of liking um, Pink Floyd and that's from Dark Side of the Moon to the Wall and I don't really go anything after that, um, but... I would question whether Pink Floyd were actually prog as well. Um, but, you know, as I say, the, the, you know, the tracks were, were were really long. And, you know, take a solo. By all means, take a solo. Those sort of eight bars in the middle of the song is perfect for your solo. You don't need any longer than that. Well, maybe 16 bars. 16 bars absolutely tops for your solo. But... Don't take half an hour over it because, you know, at some point during that half an hour, I'm going to need to take a pee. Now, one of the albums that I really tried hard was with was was the Yes album, um, Towels from Topographic Oceans, uh, a concept album where the concept was based on the scriptures of some ancient yogi. God help us. Uh, a double album, four tracks, one track on each side, each track tipping the clock at around 20 minutes. 20 minutes! That is utterly preposterous uh, to me. Uh, 20 minutes for a song. You know, if you can't say what you need to say in five minutes, it's probably not worth mentioning. And I do realise that there are a few exceptions to that rule. Great songs that are longer than five minutes. And don't even get me started on Rick Wakeman in a cape, surrounded by 15 banks of keyboards doing Journey to the Centre of the Earth on ice at the Empire Pool, Wembley. What the hell was that about? Probably the worst idea since George Harrison decided to take Eric Clapton home to meet the wife. So for me, uh, prog rock is a little bit too showy offy, a little bit too clever for its own good. It's a bit like uh, prog saying to a silly old pop, um, you know, here's my dick, look how big it is. It's a little bit too clever for its own good. And, and remember, you'll never ever find someone uh, washing their car whilst happily whistling uh, the coda from Supper's Ready. Um, but having said all that, I totally understand how all my friends at school uh, really loved prog rock. And I've got lots of friends on YouTube who really love prog rock and uh, do prog rock uh, videos brilliantly. And... Uh, this little rant isn't supposed to, uh, isn't there to alienate you. I'm just having a laugh, really. So question number five is, when watching other people's videos, do you ever flick through the video until you find an artist shown that you like? Uh, no, generally I don't because normally I can tell whether I'm going to like the content of a video from the thumbnail or I tend to mostly watch videos from uh, channels that I subscribe to. And if I subscribe to a channel, it's because I like 
the presenter and the way that they do it. Uh, don't always agree with their opinion, but that's absolutely fine. That is healthy and good. But um, I do um, watch the videos, you know, fully, because if they're doing like a ranking video, um, I might find out something about an album that I've never heard of or don't know anything about, and it might be an absolute gem. And we're all looking for new things to listen to. So, you know, I, you know, I want to hear about things that I don't know about. So that's absolutely fine. I don't generally uh, skip through people's videos. Question number six, what are your thoughts on shorts? Um, I don't really have the legs for them. Um, but I think what Richard means is, what do I think of short videos? Shorts are okay. I sometimes watch them. I sometimes don't. I prefer videos of full length, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, I've made a few shorts, but only maybe about three or four shorts. They're quite good for promoting um, videos that are coming up on your channel or just telling people that subscribe to your channel, um, you know, uh, what is either what's coming up or you know, something like that, some news or something like that that you don't want to make a full length video for. Um, but mostly I, I, you know, I don't make a short for every video that I make. In fact, I hardly ever make them. But the thing that I love most about shorts is how much Glenn Kellaway from The Basement absolutely hates them. His rant about shorts was hilarious. Thank you, Glenn, for that. It made me laugh a lot. Okay, uh, do you use the community tab for polls. Yes, I do. I've got a poll running at the moment. I usually use polls in the community tab to survey uh, subscribers on opinions, um, usually about a video that I'm thinking about making in the future. So I'm kind of gauging their both their interest and their opinion um, on, on that. And I sometimes use it for subscribers to choose which video I'm going to make next. So yes, I do use it. Uh, question number eight. Is there anything about your own videos that you don't like? Yeah, the presenter's a complete pillock. Um, yeah, okay, so time for a little bit of uh, self-analysis. So, yeah, I think that, I always think that my videos are too long and nobody's going to watch them. I mean, look at the length of this video and I'm only up to question eight. Um, I always do think my videos are a little bit too long. And then also, when I first started making videos, I noticed for the first time that I do something when I talk, and that is to use er uh, quite a lot or um uh, as my thinking time while I'm while I'm speaking, and uh, I don't really like that. And I used to do it quite a lot, and I'm trying to improve that, but I still do it. It's just the way that I talk. But I did once get a comment on one of my videos that just said er 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 er, and I know what he was getting at. So I just responded by saying, I'm really sorry about that. I've got a speech impediment, which I don't have. It's just the way that I talk. But it, that comment was enough to shame him into deleting that comment. Question number nine, is there anything about other people's videos that you don't like? Oh, that's a hard one because, you know, everyone makes videos in a in a different way. There's things that I'm envious about. and I, In other words, they're people's technical skills uh, always impress me. Um, but is there anything I don't like? Uh, that's a really difficult one. Uh, oh, so what about theme tunes? I don't like uh, theme tunes because if you subscribe to a channel and they have a theme tune at the start of every video you watch, after you've watched it, uh, watched about four or five videos, you're fed up with the theme tune. So I tend to skip the theme tune. I hope that is a good enough answer, Richard. Question number 10, the final question. Um, if you were to stop making videos, would you A, shut down your channel completely, B, keep the videos live, C, make the videos private, D, would you make an announcement that you would long, no longer be making videos? Okay, so if I was to uh, stop, decide to stop making videos, um, I wouldn't shut down the channel completely. I'd just leave the videos there and I'd leave them live. There's no point in making them private because that would mean only I can see them and I have all my videos saved locally anyway, so there wouldn't be any point in that. Would you make an announcement that you'd no longer be making videos? Uh, yes, I would make an announcement. Um, not in a flouncy, uh, attention-seeking, um, please beg me not to go sort of way, 
But I kind of now think of my channel, which has kind of been going for about 18 months, as a little bit of a community. And I think it's kind of got that feel because I, I always see it on all my videos that I tend to see comments by the same people, the same names kind of crop up on all my videos, which is really fantastic. I really like that about um, my channel. And um, I think that if people are taking the time to write comments on videos, if I'm deciding not to make videos anymore, then they deserve to know what's going on. And I do like to keep people um, up to date on what's going on in my channel. So if that was to happen, I would make an announcement and say, yeah, look, this is my last video. I've had enough now. But as things stand, um, I'm not going to be shutting down my channel uh, anytime soon. I'm really enjoying making videos. Okay, that is it. I hope you like the, the answers to your questions, Richard. Um, for anyone who isn't a, a video maker who has made it to the end of this video, I thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will be back doing Beatles stuff at the weekend. I've got a good video coming at the weekend that I think you're going to like. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you all soon. Bye bye.